Audio interfaces are an integral part of every music studio, providing the crucial bridge between the worlds of analog and digital sound. To record any analog source for use in the digital domain, you will need some kind of sound interface. Now the right interface for Mac or PC can open a whole world of possibilities for your workflow for all your audio needs, but there's a huge selection of audio interfaces to choose from and it can be quite daunting. From multi-channel rigs used in professional studios to ultra-portable single input devices like the Audient ID4 or the Focusrite Solo. If you want to record on the road, a versatile and portable interface with a single input could be the right choice for you. For smaller band projects, you might want four or more inputs, such as the Focusrite 18i8 or the Native Instruments Audio 6. You should also consider whether or not you need to send MIDI to and from your computer to external gear, if you need extra digital only connections or if the interface comes with any software to get you started. I don't tend to record more than two things at once so I'm happy with the workflow of the Audient ID14. Now I've put a few links below to some other choices that you may want to consider before buying an audio interface. Buckle up because I'm about to go through all the options you may want to consider before buying an audio interface and why it's an integral part to your studio for film or music. Let's get digital, sample rates and conversion. This may be the part where you zone out but I'll be as quick as I can because this will initially help you pick the right interface for you. All producers using hardware will eventually have to convert their analog signal into digital sound. That is, if they want to record and edit inside a digital audio workstation, DAW for short. Say for example, you have lots of external gear like synths, drum machines and samplers. The way these machines generate sound may not be analog. There are many digital synths for example, but sounds that come from their output is. To capture that output and turn it into a digital recording for use in a DAW is the work of the trusty audio interface. When recording performances or tracking in, your audio interface and door lets you set the recording quality. Before you buy, take a look first at the interface's specifications. You will see something like 24-bit slash 192 kilohertz. This refers to the unit's maximum conversion rate, in this case a bit depth of 24 and a sample rate of 122,000 samples per second. Together these figures determine the overall quality of the audio to digital AD and the digital to audio DA conversion. How many inputs and outputs do I really need? Choosing the right one all depends on how many things you want to record at once, whether it's one, two, three, four, and how many outputs you want to send to, like speakers or other recording devices. Sounds coming in. That's what she said! You will need at least two inputs if you want to record in stereo, which is important for recording certain synths, drum machines, or a matched pair of stereo microphones, for example. Input types. Interfaces of all shapes and sizes offer a combination of input types, XLR connections for microphones and quarter inch jack for guitar synths and drum machines. It's also common to see these connections in a combined XLR jack input, which helps keep the designs compact. Many interfaces also offer some form of direct digital input via optical or SPDIF connections. We'll cover these later on, but for now let's focus on the analog to digital channels. Whether recording microphones, guitars or synths, the audio interface needs to adjust the strength of the input it receives. In most cases, the input signal needs to be boosted or pre-amplified, while certain types of microphones like condenser mics have to be supplied with an additional phantom power in order to work. This is provided by the interface via its XLR connections. Your interface will give you control over this, with the option to select between mic, instrument or line level sources and gain controls via a piece of software or with dedicated knobs on the front panel. Virtually all interfaces offer at least one headphone output, usually with a separate volume control too. Going out, DA. Choosing an audio interface with the right number of outputs can also be very important. Interfaces will offer at least two outputs to connect your left and right speakers. What else is there to consider? As mentioned earlier, a lot of audio interfaces also offer ins and outs via a digital or SPDIF connection. These allow you to connect sound to and from any device that supports the format. So to conclude, finding the best audio interface is a matter of knowing how it will work for you now and in the future. As your project expands in scope, so does your need to record and reprocess your sounds in more elaborate ways. You need to be looking for something that offers versatility, good value for money and good audio quality. Also be sure to check out what software packages come bundled with the unit as these can make for an even better deal overall. Finally, don't worry too much about your choice. Most audio interfaces work straight out of the box and it's very hard for you to go too far wrong. Just make sure it works for your Mac or PC okay. Thanks for watching and if you feel like being awesome, hit that like and subscribe button. See you next time.